Hi there, my name is Miss Kelly. I'm a virtual content specialist for social studies grades three through five. And today we are going to be reviewing how to paraphrase by learning a little bit about the westward expansion. So today we're going to be reading an article about the War of 1812, which, which was an important event in the westward expansion period. After we read that article together, we will practice paraphrasing from that text. We'll be using this chart to help us. On this side of the chart, we write what the text actually reads. And then on this side, we restate that in our own words. Because remember, when you paraphrase something, that means putting the text in your own words. You are not quoting it. You are putting the information in your own words. You still have to credit the source because that's the person who said the idea initially. Let's get started and practice this. Today, as we read our article, you might find some of these words, which may be new to you. The first is the word conflict. Conflict is when two people or two groups of people are disagreeing about something. We also have the word allies. Allies are people who are working together, usually against another group. So they have decided that they are going to be allies or they are going to work together against something or someone else. Finally, we have the word enormous. Enormous means really, really large or big, but it can also mean really, really important. Our focus question for our reading is, how can we put important parts from the text in our own words? Let's get started. The Expanding of American Republic and the War of 1812 by ushistory.org, adapted by Nuzella staff on 5917. Here we see a painting and the caption reads, General Andrew Jackson, right, stands with his sword raised and his army's victory over the British in the Battle of New Orleans during the War of 1812. As I read, I'm going to pause a few times and ask you to practice paraphrasing in your head or out loud with a partner. Here we go. The United States underwent huge changes during the beginning of the 1800s. The country began to expand as settlers moved into new territory west of the Appalachian Mountains. At the same time, the country entered new conflicts with Native Americans and Great Britain. These events all played a part in the coming of the War of 1812. Hmm. I'm going to stop here and paraphrase so you can see how I do this. I'm going to put what I just read in my own words. So it seems like the War of 1812 happened as a result of big changes our country was going through in the 1800s. At that time, Americans were moving west and they were living in places they hadn't lived before. And by doing that, it created new conflicts with Native Americans and Great Britain who had land where these new American settlers were going to live. So notice how I put that in my own words. Something that really helps me is to not look at the text as I'm paraphrasing just to make sure that I'm saying it in my own words and not accidentally borrowing the text. Let's keep reading and then you can try the next time. America quickly expanded to the West. In 1803, the Louisiana Purchase added a huge piece of new territory to the United States. The territory included the land west of the Appalachian Mountains, which run from Maine to Georgia. In 1790, only a small number of Americans lived in this area. But by 1820, one out of four Americans lived west of the Appalachians. During the early 1800s, many Americans moved west into the new territory. This period of settlement was known as westward expansion. Westward expansion caused a great deal of conflict. Native Americans in the West were not happy to see Americans moving onto their land. This led to new conflicts along the frontier. Slavery was expanded to, and slaves were forced to move west and work on new land. But the majority of white Americans saw westward expansion as a big opportunity. It promised independence and success to anyone willing to meet the challenges of frontier life. Pause the video here, and if you need to, reread this section. 
choose one paragraph to paraphrase to yourself in your head or with a partner. Pause the video and practice paraphrasing here. Nice job, let's keep reading. Tensions increase with Great Britain. While Western movement was reshaping the nation, European wars also presented a challenge to the United States. The Napoleonic Wars were fought between Great Britain and France from 1802 to 1815. The United States did not want to take a side in this conflict. It wanted to keep trading with both countries, but neither Great Britain nor France respected this position. Both tried to prevent U.S. ships from carrying goods to their enemy. Britain was also assisting Native Americans in the Western United States. This created more conflict over land and trade, which finally led to the War of 1812. The United States entered the war hesitantly. There was strong opposition from some Americans in New England. They wanted to preserve friendly relations with Great Britain. When Congress finally declared war, the vote was heavily divided. Let's pause here one more time, or another time, let's pause here another time, and try this out again. Pick a paragraph, reread it, then cover it up and say it in your own words to yourself or a partner. Go ahead and pause the video here. Nice job, let's keep reading. The Second War for American Independence. The War of 1812 was similar to the Revolutionary War. Once again, the United States fought against the British and their Native American allies. For this reason, some historians see the conflict as the second war for American independence. During the war, the British launched a failed attack on Fort McHenry in Baltimore. One person who witnessed the attack was Francis Scott Key. He wrote a poem about it called The Star-Spangled Banner. This became the official national anthem of the United States in 19. 31. All right, you know the drill. Pause the video here, pick a paragraph, and paraphrase it. Say it in your own words. Reread it, cover the text, then summarize it in your own words. Go ahead. Excellent work. Let's keep reading. Claiming victory from several military defeats. The War of 1812 was an important turning point in the history of the United States, but it was mostly a political and military disaster. The war was very expensive and caused great destruction when the British attacked Washington, D.C. They burned most of the public buildings, including the White House. President James Madison had to flee the city. His wife, Dolly, gathered valuable national objects and escaped with them at the last minute. This was the low point of the war. The War of 1812 came to an end largely because the British people had grown tired of their long war against France. Now that France was almost defeated, the war against the United States lost support. On December 24th, 1814, the United States and Great Britain signed the Treaty of Ghent. This brought the War of 1812 to a close. At the start of the 1800s, much of North America was not yet part of the United States. After the War of 1812, this began to change. The years of the new nation were a period of enormous change, including big political changes and the rush of Western expansion. America was growing up. All right, for the last time, pause the video here. Pick a paragraph from the last subheading, reread it, cover it up, paraphrase it. Go ahead. Great work. Let's try this with our graphic organizer. First, I'm going to show you how I would paraphrase part of the text, and then you're going to try it out after me. Here's a quote from the actual text. The Napoleonic Wars were fought between Great Britain and France from 1802 to 1815. The United States did not want to take a side in this conflict. It wanted to keep trading with both countries but neither Great Britain nor France respected this position. Both tried to prevent US ships from carrying goods to their enemy. All right, 
read it, reread it in my head. Okay, now I'm gonna cover it up with my hand and I'm gonna say it in my own words. Here we go. The United States did not want to take sides when Great Britain and France fought in the Napoleonic Wars from 1802 to 1815. However, both Great Britain and France were unhappy with this, this decision, so they worked to prevent the United States from trading with the other side. Notice how I said the same ideas and the same events, but I put it in my own words. And if I were putting this in an essay or an assignment, I would still credit the article because that's where I got the ideas from. All right, guys, now it's your turn. Here's an actual quote from the text. During the war, the British launched a failed attack on Fort McHenry in Baltimore. One person who witnessed the attack was Francis Scott Key. He wrote a poem about it called The Star-Spangled Banner. This became the official national anthem of the United States in 1831. Go ahead and pause the video here. This time you're going to write it down. You are either going to write it on your paraphrase activity sheet or on a separate piece of paper or in your social studies notebook. Go ahead and paraphrase this quote. Nice job, historians. Let's see how I did it. Francis Scott Key wrote a poem called The Star-Spangled Banner while witnessing a failed British attack on Fort McHenry in Baltimore. This later became the national anthem of the United States. Thank you so much for reading with me today. I hope you had a great time reviewing paraphrasing by reading more about the War of 1812. Paraphrasing is a really important skill that you can use when doing social studies assignments. I'll see you next time.